Now, let me officially begin today's event. Good morning, everyone in the Netherlands. Good morning, everyone. Let me begin with a few housekeeping notes about Zoom. Simultaneous interpretation is being provided for today's event. So before we start today's event, I'd like to inform you about the Zoom function on the uh, interpretation. As you can see from the slide, if you are using your PC, you can see the interpretation icon, the globe icon, to switch the interpretation language. And if you are on your mobile phone, you can also click this icon to choose the language. To select your language, please uh, see as followed uh, instruction on the, on the slide. Now, let me begin today's event. My name is Juan Lee from Dutch Embassy in Korea. At the outset, I'd like to express my gratitude to everyone for joining the Zero Energy Building and Aquafor Thermal Energy Storage Matching Day to reduce building energy for achieving carbon neutrality. We have two special guests who have come to congratulate today's event despite their busy schedules. First, I'd like to invite Robert Dijkhaus, Sustainable Building Envoy from the Netherlands Ministry of the Interior and Kingdom Relations for congratulatory remarks. Yes. Good morning to you all and, and welcome or for the Korean people, of course, good afternoon. Uh, so welcome to all these participants to this uh, meeting on Zero Energy Buildings and Aquathermal Energy. Uh, and a special welcome to Mr. Min Soo Kim, the president of SAREC, the Society for Air Conditioning and Re Refrigerating Agencies in Korea, Engineers in Korea. So my name is Robert Dijkstraes and I'm the Special Envoy for Sustainable Building in the Netherlands. And this is a new position which was created at the beginning of this year. And that was in response to the, uh, the launch of, uh, of the European Green Deal. And the European Green Deal has set a very ambitious target to become the first climate neutral continent by 2050. Um, the built environment is responsible for 36% of greenhouse gas emissions. So it will have to play a very big role in to reach this target of climate neutrality. And by 2050, all buildings need to be free from the use of fossil fuels for heating and cooling. So increasing the amount of zero energy buildings and, and making use of aquathermal energy will be essential uh, to achieve these goals. Um, yesterday, we had a meeting between the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport of Korea and uh, our Ministry of the Interior and Kingdom Relations uh, to celebrate 60 years of diplomatic uh, ties between our nations, but also to talk a little bit deeper on our collaboration on smart cities and, uh, and in, uh, building, etc. And one of the things that we discussed was our policies on zero energy buildings. And we concluded that we have corresponding ambitions. So because of that, I'm very happy to see that today we already take the next step and uh, we exchange concrete examples by businesses on how we can make uh, these ambitions to become climate neutral by 2050 to become reality. So I'm convinced that this exchange will lead to many more new insights and, and fruitful future contacts. So let's stop speaking for me and I wish you very, all a very successful meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for your remarks. So Mr. Robert touched upon the meeting between the Korea Minister of Land, Infrastructure and Transport and the Netherlands Ministry of the Interior and Kingdom Relations that happened yesterday. This year is also a very meaningful year for our host. So we have a very special speaker today, Mr. Kim Min Su, the President of Society of Air Conditioning and Refrigerating Engineers of Korea. Please give him a big hand. Uh, let me take off my mask. 
uh, briefly for my speech. Ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests, as introduced, my name is Kim Min Su, the president of the Society of Air Conditioning and Refrigerating Engineers of Korea. I would like to thank all the participants for joining the Zero Energy Building and Aquathermal Energy Matching Day, co-hosted by the Netherlands Embassy in Seoul and in and our society in honor of the 60th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between the Netherlands and Korea. Since early last year, COVID-19 began spreading, leading to enormous changes in our lives, such as disease prevention measures and social distancing. We are not out of the woods yet, but the situation is stabilizing with the distribution of vaccines. I am filled with deep emotions as we are hosting this event, even amid these difficult circumstances. I hope we can have a successful and fruitful event today until the very end. This event is a venue for companies and organizations in the Netherlands and Korea to discuss reduction of building energy and aquathermal energy, as well as the development of active technologies and to network and make presentations. The Netherlands is a well-known country to Korea. On the Jeju Island, you can find a statue for Hamel Hendrik, who came to the island in the 17th century and wrote a journal of Hendrik Hamel, which promoted our country across our Western countries. And we all know about the Hague Conventions. In addition, the Netherlands was among 16 countries that fought alongside Korea during the Korean War. The Netherlands is also well known for its well-established trade, finance, logistics, floriculture, dairy farming, electronics, pharmaceuticals, and other tech-intensive industries. And I think many people also watched Formula One, which was held in the Netherlands for the first time in 35 years. The team was a Red Bull, but the driver of the team was Max Verstappen, who was the Dutch. So I think it was uh, quite a festival last week for the Netherlands. The Sarak was established in 1971, marking the 50th anniversary this year. In areas of building facilities and industrial facilities, it has worked to research machinery, energy, environment, and control, develop relevant technologies, and improve the status of engineers. We have 9,000 members, including uh, 200 special members. Today, we gathered to discuss zero energy building and aquathermal energy related to activities that businesses and organizations are engaging in and their strategies to seek opportunities for win-win growth and cooperation. I hope you actively network with each other and get to know each other better. I would like to thank the guests, participants, the Netherlands Embassy in Korea, and Mr. Robert from the Ministry of the Interior and Kingdom Relations again for joining us today. And I also like to thank the organizers who made this event possible. I hope our event to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between our two countries become a memorable event. We have not returned to normal yet, but uh, therefore we are holding this forum in a hybrid format, but I hope we can meet in person later to network and exchange information. I wish you the best of luck and health and I'd like to thank the organizers once again. Thank you. Thank you very much for your remarks. I'd like to congratulate you on your 50th anniversary. We have one announcement. As we have many presentations today, everyone will be given seven minutes for presentation. 
We will take questions after all the presentations end, so please use the chat function of the Zoom if you have any questions. Now we will hear from seven speakers from the Netherlands, starting with the Wittevien Plus Boss, a leading Dutch engineering and consulting firm in construction, civil engineering and urban areas, which conducted a feasibility study on Busan Eco Delta City with regards to aquifer thermal energy project. Hello, good morning. Morning. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, uh, we, we can see your screen and your yeah, camera as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, good morning uh, and good afternoon, everyone, depending uh, on where you are. And thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to give a short pitch on our company and also on uh, our profile on Atis and Aquathermal Energy uh, Systems. Yeah, uh, I'm Saleh Mohammadi, a renewable energy consultant at uh, Vitvein and Bus Engineering Firm. Uh, Vitvein and Bus is an independent consultancy and engineering firm, uh, mainly working in the industry and public sector based in Netherlands. And uh, it has been founded in 1946. And since then, we have grown into a company with uh, more than 1,300 uh, employees worldwide. We have uh, six offices in the Netherlands and uh, 13 offices uh, in 11 countries abroad. Uh, here are the, the, the main sectors of uh, our company, including uh, built environment, energy, water and environment, uh, deltas, coast and river and infrastructure and mobility. And we provide consultancy and engineering, engineering services uh, in this field uh, for our clients. Uh, in relation to energy transition and, and, and the forward energy transition, as you know, is one of the most important challenges uh, worldwide is uh, how we can combine a new and existing sustainable energy technologies uh, from, from the early start, from the production to distribution and use in, in one integrated uh, system. In uh, our company, in Vitvein and Bus, we have expertise throughout the whole value chain. And with that, we'd help uh, our customers and our clients throughout the, to the value chain, from the generation, storage, and distribution to, to, to optimize energy consumption, uh, as you see in this uh, simple uh, infographic. Uh, with regard to uh, uh, ATIS and Aquathermal Energy Systems, uh, our company has expertise on uh, all ranges of uh, uh, underground thermal energy storage. Uh, as you see uh, from, from the early, from the in a small scale, from the uh, Betis or Borehole uh, uh, thermal energy storage to, to ATIS and to the end to the, the different range of uh, geothermals, including shallow, deep, and uh, ultra deep. So, uh, so, for those of you that maybe at this or aquifer thermal energy storage is new or not familiar, it, it's a it's a seasonal thermal energy storage uh, uh, that can, uh, in a sustainable way, basically provide heating and cooling for the buildings by reusing and uh, uh, heat and cold from the buildings and storing it in the subsurface and again recycling it uh, for use. Uh, we apply uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, integrate this, uh, this technology in our uh, projects uh, from different scales, uh, for example, from the, from the building level to the, to, the, to the regional scale. And we integrate this technology with the regional energy planning, for example, with the larger scale heat pumps or with the, with the aqua uh, thermal energy that basically is the heat uh, uh, recovery and recycling heat from the from the surface water and switch to the to, the, uh, to larger scale like urban energy uh, master planning. Here you see our uh, uh, activities, roles, and also our UPS in the application of ATIS and aquathermal energy systems. For example, uh, as you see in, in in development of master planning and spatial planning of uh, of the aquathermal energy systems. 
to the feasibility study and business case, risk assessment, geological and geological uh, modeling and impact assessment, uh, detailed engineering design, realization, monitoring, and also optimization, basically, of the operation of the system. Uh, I will uh, present two examples of our reference project. The first one is, uh, is in one interesting project called the Smart Thermal Grid for the Floriada 2022. So in this project, basically beside the designing the, 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 the uh, nearly zero energy buildings, uh, we also design a, a kind of smart thermal grid based on the principle of smart grid in electrical engineering and we apply that to the thermal networks. And by that, we connect buildings, users uh, together, and also to the at system that was regenerated by the surface water that was uh, surface water from the uh, nearby uh, lakes. Another uh, reference project that also was mentioned earlier uh, in the introduction was a feasibility study on applying aquifer thermal energy storage in the Busan EDC. That we did this project in cooperation with the KDEC and KWater. And it was, uh, yeah, in the, in the project, basically, we did all kind of detailed analysis of uh, uh, surface and subsurface for, for, the, for the project site. We, we analyze the energy demand of the buildings and we design a kind of integrated energy system uh, that connects the edges to the aquatermia and also connected to the buildings. Uh, some lesson learned that might be uh, interesting for you in this project here you can see, including uh, Atis, yeah, we, 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 we found that the Atis uh, indeed is a, is a viable option and proven technology for collective heating and cooling in Korea. And uh, with energy saving of 50% uh, for heating and 90% for cooling can be can be achieved. ROI is up to seven years, of course, depending on the location and uh, specification of the subsoil of the location. Uh, CO2 between 40 and 90% can be achieved, uh, suitable for built, built environment because uh, basically at the, have any smell, noise, or visual impact or kind of heat island impact. And also, interestingly, we saw that uh, Korea basically has a kind of stronger position, a stronger, uh, like a, it, it is quite a, a favorable uh, situation for the Atis. For example, if you compare it to the Netherlands, because the seasonal temperature differences between uh, uh, summer and winter is quite high compared to the Netherlands. So that's basically favored the, the operation of the Atis system. So I would like to end the, 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 the pitch by uh, mentioning a few opportunities and challenges for the application of ATIS and aquatermy in, in, in Korea. Uh, on the uh, strength side, uh, I, 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 I would say that there's an abundant aquatermy energy sources in Korea. A recent study by Kewater shows that almost 27,000 gigawatt uh, hour per year can be recycled, basically from the reservoirs and water pipelines in Korea. That's a huge uh, potential. Also, there's a strong uh, driving forces uh, from the government because of the new Green Deal uh, to, to decarbonize the built environment that basically can, can provide a nice uh, context for application of ATIS and aquatermy. Saleh, so I, I think... We we have uh, we we run out the time uh, seven minutes sorry but uh, I need, can, uh, can you finish it in, in uh, maybe I'm five done. five second yeah. yeah and then in the challenge side of course there's a lack of data and still regulation are very uh, complicated and there's also lack of operational experience in Korea for this technology uh, yeah thank you very much for uh, your interest and attention if you like uh, more information or has any question please feel free to contact me thank you very much okay thank you Salar. Thank you for understanding. For those who are present here and wish to listen to English to Korean interpretation, please use the receiver and turn to channel one. Next, we have a presentation by Anton from Delta S, one of the Netherlands leading engineering and consulting firms in water business. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Uh, can you can see I hear your presentation? You. Yes, uh, we can see your presentation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for uh, 
for uh, for having us and uh, uh, to allow us to give a presentation on this uh, this event. Um, I will tell briefly something about Daltaris and then I will focus more on the aqua thermal energy and the warming up uh, research program because it's very much related to this uh, to this event. Um, Daltaris is a not-for-profit uh, organization in the Netherlands. We are a research institute. Uh, so our aim is to develop the research and to make it applicable uh, for the market. Um, well, uh, this is a bit how we, uh, well, this figure shows how we look at uh, the energy transition at Daltaris. Uh, of course, we have to reduce uh, CO2 emissions uh, on the left side. And uh, yeah, you, we need all kind of... Uh, uh, process for that uh, solar, uh, wind, water, and uh, subsoil, and uh, we think that uh, yeah, water and subsurface are very important to be used in energy transition, and it can be used even more. Um, it can be used, but uh, on the other hand, we also have directly to investigate the impacts of uh, of all um, renewable energy systems, and for sure, um, we have. Um, no detailed vision how the energy transition will develop in the coming years and we need to be adaptive uh, so so um, yeah to be able to move together with new, te new technologies um, when we look at energy transition well we um, uh, we have a electrical uh, transition also the heat uh, transition that's what of course we are together for here and for the, the heat transition uh, in the Netherlands, there has been a, a big research program has been uh, set up. It's called uh, Warming Up. And uh, Warming Up aims to reduce uh, CO2 emissions and, and uh, develop uh, knowledge for the, the, uh, the heat transition. Uh, in this uh, research program, uh, there are uh, six different uh, research lines um, uh, defined from which uh, three research lines are uh, focusing on the source, so aqua thermal energy, geothermal energy, and subsurface storage, the ATS system, which uh, Mr. Mohami uh, just told about. And uh, there are also some design uh, methods for heat networks. And there are uh, tools developed to uh, integrate all these systems. And there is also uh, a research line uh, focusing on societal integration, because that can also be challenging. Um, well, we, we, this, uh, this warming up uh, research uh, program has been uh, led by Deltaris and TNO, it's another research institute in the Netherlands, and it uh, contains about uh, 38 uh, different partners, and that uh, ranges from governments, you see them on the left, uh, top left, uh, right side, uh, governmental organization, research institutes a bit at the top, and you see... Um, also, uh, uh, municipalities, consulting companies, and um, construction companies, and also universities. So it's a big group of all different uh, partners who uh, develop uh, knowledge. Also, our, uh, our friends of If Technology are, uh, are uh, added to the list. They will give a presentation in the next uh, slide. So now I'll focus, uh, well, as you have seen in the warming up program, there was one source that was uh, focusing on aqua thermal energy. And I will focus a bit on aqua thermal energy. And aqua thermal energy can be used um, very well to restore the the imbalance. So if there is more uh, heat or more cold needed, then uh, uh, aqua thermal energy can restore this uh, imbalance. In the Netherlands, we um, we divide the aqua thermal energy in three different groups. So aqua thermal energy from surface waters, aqua thermal energy from drinking water, and aqua thermal energy from wastewater. And to give you an idea, the, the potential for aqua thermal energy in the Netherlands is uh, sufficient to supply more or less half of the Netherlands uh, for uh, with heat. So it's yeah, it's it, it can be quite uh, uh, significant. Um, an additional value is that aqua thermal energy can also be used uh, for cooling. And uh, I briefly looked it up, and I saw that uh, water temperatures in Korea. Well, this is a water temperature in the uh, in uh, uh area and in, in, um, is more or less similar to the to the Netherlands. So the, the situation is a bit different. Of course, the climate is a bit different. So the, the the demand for heat and cooling is is a bit different. But there are quite some similarities. So that can also be developed in 
uh, Korea. Well, in this research line, aqua thermal energy in uh, warming up, we have uh, three um, uh, sub themes, and they are looking at on the potential of aqua thermal energy. That's the the figure you see on the right hand side, on the top. You see, we made a viewer, for example, which shows the the amount of gigajoules uh, per year that uh, you can harvest from a certain freshwater body. So the colors show you the amount of uh, energy that can be harvested. Uh, on the lower uh, left, you see uh, assessment. We do assessments for the ecological uh, impact, uh, looking at surface water and um, uh, literature investigation. What kind of impact d does these uh, outflows in in surface water have? And on the right uh, lower side, you see we also look at the technique and the cost of aqua thermal energy. A system normally um, uh, consists of an intake system, pipeline systems, and a heat exchanger. Um, and what you can see on the photo on the left hand side is that this small pipe with the red arrows uh, pointed is for example an intake of aqua thermal energy system which is quite small for a built environment. Um, we also looked at, uh, uh, well if you would feed a whole city with aqua thermal heat uh, what would happen? Is it realistic to feed a whole city? So we investigated the city of Nijmegen which is located at the Waal River in the Netherlands. Nijmegen is a city about 170,000 inhabitants. Uh, basic conclusion was that, uh, yeah, aqua thermal energy can be uh, used uh, for, to, for, to supply a whole uh, city. So the, the intake systems and outfall systems have normal sizes. The heat pumps have uh, realistic sizes that can be uh, 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 purchased on the market. There is sufficient uh, subsurface storage capacity and also uh, the, there are the pipe diameter for aqua thermal energy system are normal, are realistic. And uh, my last slide, we also uh, looked at other cities in Europe um, where we assess the, the potential for aqua thermal energy. A lot of city, cities are, um, are built at, uh, alongside the rivers um, and on the left and on the lower uh, right side, you see a table for the different cities, uh, which percentage um, of heat can be used, uh, can be generated from, um, from aqua thermal energy. And you see when you combine it, uh, excluding eight test systems is, for example, quite high in, in the Netherlands, but uh, also in uh, Paris, you can uh, have more than 50%. If you include include ATS systems, well also the subsurface should be, uh, should be um, uh, good to do that. Uh, and then uh, the percentage decreases slightly. Okay, Anton, I think we, uh, we ran out of time. Uh, can you uh, finish it in five seconds, maybe? Uh, yes, well, uh, thank you very much. This was my last slide and I hope you, uh, uh, well, we would also be interested in uh, doing this together with Korean companies, looking at Korean cities. Okay, great. Thank you. 감사합니다. 다음으로 어, 네덜란드 지열과 수열 관련해서 가장 많은 경험을 갖고 있는 Our next speaker is from a company that has the longest track record in the field of geothermal and aquifer thermal energy. Let me present Bas from EF Technology. Can, can you make it a full screen? Uh, we see. Okay. We're trying to avoid some uh, acoustic feedback since we're in the same room. Okay. So we will use Buzz's uh, computer. Okay. I can hear your voice clearly now. Uh, can you turn on your screen uh, uh, with a slide? Yeah, but yes, now. One Okay, one second, please. Okay. Wait. Three, this one, 
here. Okay, now see the uh, the PowerPoint. Yes, I said to start and then. Okay, okay. I'm very sorry. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much that we are able to present something about our company, If Technology. We are an engineering and consultant company in geothermal energy, shallow, deep, and aquathermal. Today, we will give a duo presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Bas Godschalk. I'm the international business manager of IF Technology and doing a lot of projects uh, in the Netherlands, but also in Japan, China, US, UK, and other European countries. I'm very pleased that I can be uh, on your uh, matchmaking event. And my colleague is uh, Hans Biemont, which is, uh, he will say something about himself. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. My name is Hans Biemont. I'm a constant development. Uh, expert and uh, mainly working in a real estate development uh, using hydrothermal technology. So something about if technology. Um, we are a, a consultancy company with about uh, 95 uh, to uh, close to 100 uh, and at the moment employees. Uh, we're solely working on uh, use of the local available uh, energy sources. Uh, we're focusing on uh, storage um, and also on distribution of, uh, of energy. Uh, so our main clients are uh, real estate developers, uh, governments and uh, energy companies or contractors. And we uh, perform uh, many different tasks uh, from concept development and engineering to uh, legal uh, and contracting work. So our main technologies um, make use of the subsurface, uh, both shallow and deeper geothermal technology and uh, use of the surface uh, water, which is uh, widely available in the Netherlands. So now we'll go to, uh, some, um, to give you an idea of how extensively this subsurface technology is implemented yet in the Netherlands. Here you see a map in which the purple uh, dots present uh, the large scale uh, open ATES systems, the open borehole systems, and the yellow dots present the large scale uh, closed loop systems. There are many more installations, but these are only the installations um, who uh, need a permit and are uh, above uh, 70 kilowatts. So here we see an example of a project we are still working on and have been working on the last years, which is Hyde Park in the, the west of the Netherlands. So this is a uh, for 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 Dutch uh, development a very uh, large scale uh, residential uh, area development. Um, which is a transformation development, so this is no. Um, um, no, uh, no greenfield area. This is a already uh, commercially used area, and there is a lot of building activity and demolishing going on the, for the upcoming ten years. In the end, there will be over four thousand apartments uh, and also commercial commercial facilities, facilities like a hotel or a supermarket. This entire uh, area will be uh, equipped with uh, heat pump um, facilities and they will provide heating, cooling and hot tap water to the clients. Uh, we will combine this uh, infrastructure with uh, ATA systems and with a double uh, hydrothermal installation, which will uh, harvest over 10 gigawatt hours per year. So for this, for this, <laughs> thanks. Awesome. So for this um, uh, Hyde Park um, project, we uh, are working on both technical and uh, legal uh, uh, part of the project where we provided the contracting and outsourcing. So another example 
is uh, Valkost Amersfoort, where we uh, build a uh, hydrothermal uh, installation um, as an add-on for an existing ATER system, um, working for a Vatval. Um, and we uh, designed the entire installation and also build it with our own subcontractors. Okay, thank you, Hans. Uh, what can we do for you? Because we like to emphasize that we would like to collaborate with South Korean uh, companies because we want to accelerate the uh, energy transition. So we are very open uh, for collaboration. Now, what can we do? We think we can help you with giving trainings in the design of hydrothermal and ether systems. With our experience in more than 3,000 projects, that would be uh, very nice to do. We can evaluate uh, the, the, the feasibility of hydrothermal and shallow geothermal systems. Uh, we can help you in joining design teams to work together on making reliable designs. Uh, what we also can do is do some quality checks. We can support in the realization and commissioning phase. And uh, we also have experience with the exploitation phase where we can monitor uh, ATA systems or aquathermal systems and to give recommendations for improvements. So, and the last option is that we can support in trade missions. So if our client interested, we can show and demonstrate some projects. So thank you very much for your attention and we are looking forward uh, for other contacts. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, thank you, Bas and uh, Hans. Uh, was a very informative uh, presentation. Our next presentation is by Priva, which has expanded its business from climate control for controlled environment agriculture to general buildings. Hi, everyone. Um, let me check if you things there. My name is uh, Manuel. Uh, I work for Priva. I'm based in uh, Bangkok and Singapore, 5050. Uh, so for me, it's uh, afternoon. Anya Aseo, Chenan Manuel in Nida, one cup to Nida. And I'm going to share with you on um, what Priva is doing in the region, also in, in Korea, uh, because we believe, as you can see, we, we pursue a sustainable urban delta. Uh, we are in active in indoor climates, uh, particularly for buildings, smart buildings, uh, smart controls um, to measure uh, energy efficiency, water efficiency, and smart communications. Uh, as you've seen also in smart buildings uh, in Seoul at the moment, I, I believe there are many already uh, uh, in place. Uh, furthermore, uh, we believe in a future where energy is shared with other resources like greenhouses, uh, indoor growing facilities and uh, energies extracted from uh, natural resources which make uh, a city very sustainable, livable, particularly in Asia, which is um, very populated. And um, this is something we pursue as a, as a global vision, making us um, purpose driven. Um, our founder is uh, Manny Prince. Manuel, can uh, you uh, make a full screen uh, slideshow mode, probably? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, our founder pursues a sustainable urban delta. That means we're actually active in, uh, yeah, uh, horticulture, growing uh, food and vegetables and flowers in greenhouses, uh, indoor growing, uh, mainly in uh, the U US, North America, uh, UAE, but also in smart buildings. And we use um, the Netherlands as the greenest city in the world as a benchmark, because if we look at the Netherlands as a country, and you look to Seoul as a city, um, it's practically the same size. And, uh, there is a lot of interaction, interaction changing between energy resources, smart communication in the Netherlands, which you see, uh, you know, connected to greenhouses and making energy from sustainable sources uh, the greenhouses for food production, very, um, very affordable. Um, one of the biggest challenges in food production is um, the energy um, uh, running cost, which, which influences the OPEX. And when I look to uh, Korea and, and Seoul, I see there's a huge potential in 
these development connections that we can make within um, within smart buildings controls and re-engineering uh, to feature uh, energy to greenhouses and indoor facilities. We're active, um, focusing on cities. Uh, we believe cities have a huge responsibility uh, this these decades to become sustainable, um, but also in food production, uh, increasing livelihoods, um, creating jobs. Uh, so uh, this is Singapore, for example. We're, we're currently active uh, building indoor growing cells, uh, vertical farming. As you know, uh, Singapore has little resources and still aims for 30% um, self-sufficient food production by 2030. And energy is one of the major parts that's playing a role. Uh, and with pre-rep controls, we, we're trying to enable that part. Uh, so to put things in perspective, we're active um, in smart buildings with controls which is one of the core things in Western Europe that we do at the moment. We're active in horticulture and indoor growing, which connects also energy to greenhouses. And together we believe that a city uh, like Seoul, like Singapore uh, can be very uh, sustainable in the future. Um, horticulture in Korea is at the moment in, in fast development. You see conglomerates um, also diving into horticulture, building large agro parks, and energy is one of the key parts that, that plays a vital role to the success of horticulture, uh, building automation, and indoor growing. And indoor growing is becoming very interesting because uh, looking at the demographics of, uh, of Korea, and particularly in urbanized areas like Seoul, we see, um, skipping a few slides, we see that uh, there is a huge demand for locally grown food. Um, and we see an, a connecting trend from Western Europe and North America, which is influencing uh, behavioral changes of, of Koreans to grow food locally. Um, so quick touch base on the smart building. What we do is somehow the same as indoor growing. So indoor growing is creating an indoor climate for, for food to grow. Um, we have sensors and devices that control the climate and communicate smart with the, with the building. Um, IoT connected to uh, have better control outside of the building and having AI uh, doing the work. Um, here are things uh, with energy. Energy is a very important role to connect, to see how much energy is being consumed by buildings. And we want to build these inter-exchanges between buildings, but also uh, in cities uh, to make energy available for other purposes. Here's an example that most of the, the big investors in Asia really would like to have is an exchange between the food industry and a city or um, a part of the city, which stores and which are really liked by a few presentations by Saleh and Anton, um, that uh, energy is being stored and being connected to different purposes. And this is a very sustainable model to make um, the food industry more profitable uh, by having access to, to such energy. Here's, um, an example of sustainable urban deltas uh, visions is to have the city, uh, food production close to the city, energy is exchanged. And so growers and, and, and businesses can grow a profitable crop. Here's an example of things that we have enabled in North America. This is uh, Fifth Avenue, where indoor cells uh, are connected to the heat net of, of buildings and they grow food and people uh, since the pandemic uh, have been growing food sustainably indoors. And, and I see a huge demand also in Seoul for, for, for this trend going forward. A few examples of um, Rotterdam, um, New York, also in medical cannabis, fully controlled climate environment enabling food production. So basically, uh, Priva is very interested in learning the energy exchange between cities and uh, greenhouse parks, 
but also indoor growing. And in that part, we have controls that communi can communicate very smartly uh, to divide and connect uh, facilities to, uh, uh, to food production. And, uh, and buildings. M Manuel, Therefore, I think we'll we, we're running out of time. So, uh, could you finish in a few seconds? Yeah, sure. Therefore, we have a, a Priva Academy. Uh, we'll help growers and people to learn. One of the uh, things that we have also available in Korean, and people can uh, um, see the connections and learn more about indoor growing and horticulture too. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite another key player in controlled environment agriculture, Emil Laan. Uh, is yours. Hello, everyone. Can you see my screen and can you hear me? Yes, uh, we can see your screen. And can you also turn on your camera so that you can see yeah. you as well? OK. Um, OK, yeah, now we, we can also see you uh, speaking as well. OK. Yeah. Yes? Then uh, I uh, I will start. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone, to uh, uh, that is living in the Netherlands, and good afternoon for everyone who is uh, in uh, Korea, Asia at the moment. Um, thank you for the opportunity that we can present our company here uh, at this uh, format. My name is Ronald Thijssen. I work as account manager at Amalan Construction, and uh, we are. Uh, uh, an, Horticultural company what designs realize uh, high tech glass greenhouse uh, projects. Uh, yeah, as I told, we design and realize uh, a complete turnkey uh, high uh, tech uh, greenhouse projects. Uh, our customers are uh, investors, uh, tomato growers, pepper growers, cucumber growers, uh, lettuce growers, uh, for flowers, uh, uh, balcony uh, plants, you name it. Uh, everything which you can grow and you want to control in a, uh, in a controlled climate in a greenhouse. We are active all over the world. Uh, that means also in uh, in North America, Europe, uh, Australia, Asia. Um, our uh, yeah, almost uh, active at all the continents in the world. We have here in the Netherlands uh, our all our own factory. So that means that we pr pr produce all the materials here in the Netherlands, like aluminium, uh, steel, uh, uh, and so on. Um, only the glass we buy most of the time locally in the in the country itself, where the where the building location is. The most important thing when we start with a project is a, is a, is a climate study or, or one of the most important things. Um, before we start with the design of a project, we, we study the local climate. Uh, what, do, what does the client want to grow inside the greenhouse? And those two uh, information uh, labs we uh, made into a tailor-made plan that we have, yeah, that we that we make the correct design for the greenhouse, and that that the client earns his investment investment as most uh, as fast as possible back. Our uh, company is established in 1948 in the Venlo region in the Netherlands. Uh, maybe uh, somebody knows that a, a, that a greenhouse. Uh, uh, most of the time is a Venlo greenhouse. It is designed here in, in this region where I uh, am at the moment. We have a leading position in the world. We are with the biggest five greenhouse builders in the world. Um, 
And our company has two names. Uh, one is Amalan Construction, what you see right now, that's for the uh, countries abroad. And, and Maurice Kassebau for the uh, is the company name for when we built in the Netherlands. Uh, but the company is exactly the same with the same people uh, and the same uh, location. At the moment, we have uh, 120 FTEs uh, working here at uh, Amalan, and we built the, the, the projects around the world uh, with uh, more or less 100 uh, subcontractors, uh, turnover of about 60 million. 20% um, of what we build is in uh, the Netherlands, and 80% of what we build is abroad. Uh, and uh, from that 80%, we do uh, about one third in North America, one third in Europe, and one third in Asia. Our yearly, yearly building capacity is uh, uh, between 100 and 120 hectares a year. So that's quite, quite a lot. We can produce in our factory here in the Netherlands uh, uh, if it is necessary, three hectares a week. Um, why uh, are people investing in a high-tech glass greenhouse? Um, if you uh, compare uh, a low-tech plastic foil greenhouse, for example, in South Europe, uh, if you compare that to a high-tech glass greenhouse in the Netherlands, there are uh, significant uh, advantages. We high-tech greenhouse, we use uh, uh, less water, about 50%. We can reuse the, the, the drain water, what we give to the, the water, what we give to the plants, uh, and the water, what, uh, what is not uh, taken by the plant, that, that is what we call drain water. And that's uh, about 30%. We can reuse that again uh, the, uh, and, and give it again to the plants. Uh, we use uh, significant less land about 70% less land than compared to a foil greenhouse, a way higher production. And the energy what we put in the greenhouses is, is uh, less because uh, the greenhouse is uh, better isolated. And if we uh, uh, compare that with the sustainable development goals of the VN, then, then we score uh, really high. Uh, so that's also the reason why uh, yeah, glass uh, high-tech greenhouses are uh, really popular at the moment. And, and also investors and private equity uh, companies are, are going into that business. Uh, and uh, a unique uh, uh, USP from us is an uh, air and energy system. Uh, that's uh, a climate control system to achieve an optimal and homogeneous and active growing climate. With that system, we can cultivate with closed windows and closed screening insulation to uh, uh, create an even climate. And with that insulation, we can, uh, yeah, we can uh, save a, a lot of energy because we have a, a heat recovery of the energy inside the greenhouse by, uh, by heat exchangers, by air heat exchangers. And the advantages of uh, a, a such kind of system is that we can save up to 70% of energy, a way uniform climate in the, in the greenhouse, uh, a less uh, disease pressure of, of pests and diseases. Ronald, uh, um, I think we run out of time. Can, uh, can you uh, re finish in a few seconds? Reduce the CO2 uh, use because the CO2 is staying better inside the greenhouse. And uh, uh, for the people that are working inside the greenhouse, it's a way better climate it's, it, because uh, you have some airflow uh, through the greenhouse. The condensation water, what we have uh, in the unit, Ronald, we can reuse uh, I think we need to stop for, your uh, uh, presentation. For the plants. And we can reuse the heat of the lights when we have uh, assimilation lights. So that's also very sustainable. And all of that uh, takes care that we have a, a more production, about 5 to 50%. We also built several projects in uh, Korea the last uh, years um, for various crops, for, for vegetables, for, for lettuce, uh, for, uh, 
seed propagation, uh, you name it. If you want more information, you can uh, contact me uh, uh, and then I can, uh, can tell you more about what we did over there, which projects, and uh, yeah, maybe we can uh, also work together in the future. On this slide, you see my contact information, uh, my email address, the website, uh, my mobile phone number, my direct mobile phone number. So, yeah, please free, feel free to uh, to contact me. And, okay, thank uh, you, Raoul. Question, I'm more uh, than happy to uh, to answer them. Thank you very much for the time and once again for the invitation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Next, we will hear from Wan Strunk, a Dutch architect office specialized in green buildings. Reni, please start your presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. And we can see your slides. Now it's gone. I hope you can hear me. I cannot yes. hear you anymore for any reason, so uh, I just start. So my name is uh, René Wonstrunk. I'm based in uh, the Netherlands as an architect. And uh, we develop a zero emission and a low energy um, uh, building concept. So um, it is about two things. One is the, um, uh, the building concept itself. And the next thing is to co-finance it is our carbon credit blockchain wallet. To uh, explain a little bit about the Emporium concept, it is a concept with solar heat storage integrated in the building used for indoor heating and uh, portable water. It's low exergy because uh, we keep all temperatures as close as possible to the demand temperatures and try to avoid um, the use of electricity. And it is quite well developed, so it means that um, solar collector and heat storage suppliers are available. This shows you, um, well, the principle of the concept. So um, there is a solar, uh, what, what we affected, we did a lot of uh, simulations with the Dutch um, uh, inst institutes, technological institutes and laboratories. And the outcome is, in case you look to the winter sun position, which is here the, the solar collector, you uh, minimize the demand for seasonal storage. So that's step one. And step two is in case you integrate um, the water column with the building, you use the energy losses, which is more than that you store per year as building heating. And what you see here is uh, the dimensioning of the system for uh, a housing project. So two houses and then the column in the middle. And here we made a design for a hotel, which more uh, hot water demand. So the columns are slightly larger. Um, Today, this concept is in its uh, implementation stage. So we are looking for uh, projects to learn to deliver with local partners. So the construction sector is very local organized, transport costs of materials more than 30%. So it means we will never export buildings. We can only export knowledge. Uh, we do have available uh, a transit simulation system to calculate worldwide uh, combined with outdoor climate and indoor climate uh, demands, uh, the dimensioning of the system. So that means that we are looking for local architects and engineers to cooperate with, possibly also local authorities. In case you want to use the transit system, we should like to cooperate with research institutes. And finally, that's a new part in this development. Uh, we should like to discuss with the emission trading system about the added value of zero emission buildings. So, so far um, emissions are punished. So you pay or you have to buy carbon credits because you're going over a ceiling, but um, zero emission is not yet supported. So in case you make zero emission buildings, you don't earn carbon credits. And I think that is desired or required to support uh, the implementation of new built zero emission buildings which is really necessary if you look to the, um, um, the approach in 2050 to have 95% reduction 
which is mainly impossible to do that with renovation projects. So we compensate, in fact, with zero emission new buildings, the existing building stock. So I keep it as short as possible. Here are my details. Uh, so in case you like to receive more information, please um, send me an email or give me a call. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Rene. I hope you can hear us. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ibis Power, a Dutch company with technologies to produce energy using roof integrated wind and solar power energy system. Alexander, the floor is yours. I am Alexander Suma. I'm the CEO of Ibis Power. I'm just checking. Can you hear me? If you can raise your hands, somebody, then I can see that. Yeah, I can yeah, hear you. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, Alexander Suma, the CEO of Ibis Power. Um, I would like to share with you our developments of a product that combines wind and solar energy uh, for buildings of five levels or higher and that can address the challenge that South Korea is facing in making buildings sustainable and meeting government demands on uh, building energy uh, generation on buildings. And what is the problem that uh, building developers, either it's for new construction or renovation projects, uh, are facing is that there is a limited space on the roof to apply solar panels. There is a lot of installations, air conditioning units, uh, shadow areas of elevator shaft, roof edges, etc., that limit the space that you can actually put solar panels, while solar panels on the facade are much lower in efficiency and much more costly. So that's a great limitation to meet your goals and um, actually go through the energy transition. On the other side, there is a lack of space in South Korea. And there is either mountains, and where there is no mountains, there are buildings and cities. Um, in a population of 52 million people, 80% uh, live in the city, so it's a very urbanized society, uh, while 60% of the total population live in apartment buildings. That's much more in the, than in the Netherlands. We have a different culture, um, but in South Korea, uh, uh, apartment buildings are a common good. And uh, so there is a great need to find building uh, decentral solutions to generate energy. Our solution integrates, our solution is called PowerNest, integrates solar and wind energy. It's not just a combination of a wind turbine and solar panels, but it's an enhanced, aerodynamically enhanced combination, uh, creating the highest efficiency possible. It architecturally integrates with the building, as you can see here on this picture, um, and it's a fully modular solution. And I would like to share one of those modules with you. This is what we call a, a corner module. Uh, on one side, it uh, heightens the roof space so we can make use of a most um, spatially efficient way to apply solar panels. And we go one meter over the facade where we use more than 100% of the roof space for solar panels. We add um, the wind energy system where we capture the winds from the facade with the louvers on the edge and aerodynamic uh, applications. And then we accelerate it with a Venturi effect, 140 to 160% towards the turbine. So this turbine generates four times the wind energy compared to if you would place it in a free field. We make use on an additional way of the wind. It's where um, we direct it to the solar panels, to the bottom of the solar panels, which creates a cooling effect making all the panels generate 10 to 15 percent more per year and uh, lastly we make use of the reflections internally where we can make use of bifacial solar panels and again another 20 to 30 uh, percent of solar power per year over all the solar panels so together compared to the conventional way of applying uh, solar solutions on roofs we generate six times more the energy. And in the Netherlands, that means we can supply buildings up to 15, uh, 15 stories, 15 building levels, completely of its electric energy. We won 29 awards over the uh, last year in North America, Europe, Asia. And the last one was in the United States for the Select USA Investment Summit. And this is a picture of our latest installation in Rotterdam, in the city center. It uh, supplies 16 megawatt hours per year 
which is the equivalent of 29 apartments, which is basically the whole building that you can see on this picture. Um, it consists of three modules with extensions and the crane you can still see in the picture. We lifted the full installation on six hours on top of the building. This is our next project. It will be in Eindhoven. We are currently manufacturing the steel structure for it, and it will supply 75 apartments of this 70 meter high building in the city center of Eindhoven. If I look at South Korea and its market potential, the wind speeds are specifically in the east, uh, but it's less populated area and Busan in the south, uh, which is very windy. It's also where the solar uh, generation uh, is, could be much more. And if I compare the potentials for energy uh, in the four major cities, uh, Seoul, Daegu, Gwangju uh, have a similar um, energy potential per module. So this is per module, uh, which is similar as the Netherlands, while Busan has a much more wind conditions and you can see that the power generation will be much more. Of course, uh, this is a generic picture for you in the first seeing this technology. And uh, I would like to share more information to you if you're interested. Um, we're looking for partnerships uh, in South Korea, uh, where we provide all our developments, the product, the market tools, uh, and the business models, and of course, the IP. And we're looking for a Korean partner that can have the size and the capital means to scale up in the markets, execute the projects uh, with highest quality. So thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for the translation. And uh, if you would like to have more information, uh, please, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. OK, thank you, Alexander. Can you hear us now? OK, yeah. yeah. So uh, that was the, the end of the presentation from the Dutch side. Uh, we'll start for the Korean uh, presentation. Uh, could you light up the uh, the Could you turn on the light? It's time to hear from the Korean side. So we will start firstly uh, from the uh, the coming from far away from Gangwon Province, uh, Gangwon Plus uh, Gangwon Hydro Hydrothermal Energy Conversions uh, Cluster, Mr. Kwang Jun Ham, Deputy Director from the Gangwon province will speak about their uh, plan. Can you hear me well? Can I take off my mask? Can I begin? Yes, please go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Kwang Jun Ham. As introduced, I am from Gangwon Hydrothermal Energy Convergence Cluster. It is a pleasure to be able to introduce Gangwon Hydrothermal Energy Multiple Cluster, especially to the participants from the Netherlands. So let me now begin. So this is what I will be talking about. I will give an overview and then talk about hydrothermal energy supply system and then talk about the strategy for our cluster development and then talk about our future plan as well. As well. So first, this multiple cluster is placed in Dongmyeon, Chuncheon city, which is about one hour away uh, east of Seoul. And the land area is 784,912 square meters. And we began the design work this year. And we expect the project to finish in 2027. And the total investment is about $289 million. And uh, the operators uh, are the Gangwon Province and Chuncheon City and K Water. 
This is the joint project. Then, this is how we will use the land. We have three areas. K Cloud Park, K Water Energy Park, and thirdly, the eco-friendly housing complex. Now, as for K Cloud Park, we will have large scale of data centers, six of them. There will be 40 megawatts inside each. And in the middle, you can see the K Water Energy Park and the relevant ministry will be managing this. Uh, we will be using some water energy and there will be a demonstration project. And on the right, we have the eco-friendly housing complex. So this is going to be a residential area for the employees of the clusters. And this is an eco-friendly housing complex. And let me now talk about the hypothermal energy system. Our cluster is near Soyang Gang Dam. Uh, this dam is a multi purpose dam, and without this dam, we were not able to envisage these clusters. And the, uh, these dams' water capacity is about 2.9 billion tons. And uh, thanks to the uh, suitable water temperatures of the Soyang River Dam, we are planning to use these waters for the cooling and heating of the data center. Here is the hydrothermal energy supply systems diagram. If we uh, integrate the, uh, if we bring the water from the Soyang River Dam to our clusters, then the water is sent to the data center, which is then sent to the smart farms, and then such water is then supplied to the citizens of Chuncheon. So this is an integrated system. And about a 2.7 kilometer pipeline to supply water is under construction, and we are nearing the end of the uh, construction at the moment. And our system is a gravity flow system. So Soyang River Dam, the average water level is 180 meters. And from the pump to the water purification plant, it's about 700, 170 meters. So as long as uh, it's maintained at over 178 meters, then the water can be supplied through a gravity flow system. And so how the data center is using the, will be using the hydrothermal energy. So when the water from the Soyang River Dam flows to the data center, it will be used for heating and cooling of the data center. Uh, the temperature for the water flowing into the system will be 7 degrees, but it will go out at 12 degrees Celsius. And when we actually simulated this model, we found out that the hydrothermal energy cooling is very energy efficient, requiring only 17% of the annual energy required by conventional cooler systems in data centers. It can also help uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions by a large amount. And what's unique about our uh, clusters is that we reuse the hydrothermal energy. So the temperature for water increases to 12 degrees Celsius in the data center. And when that water is sent to the smart farms and be used for heating, then that water temperature falls to 7 degrees Celsius, which is then uh, sent to the data center to be used. 
And Chuncheon citizens will benefit as well. The water temperature for Chuncheon city is quite low, so they have to use the heating system even during the summer to take a shower. However, if the temperature changes to 12 degrees Celsius thanks to these clusters, then they don't need to use the heating uh, for showers during the summer, which can reduce costs. Now, the strategy of our clusters. If we use our system, we expect that our PUE would be as low as 1.2. And we can uh, bring in many eco-friendly uh, features. And because of the time constraint, I would make it as brief as possible. At the moment, uh, we are done with the approval process mostly, and now we are under the designing process. And if our designing process is completed by next year, we believe that by by second half of next year, we will begin the construction. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Now we would like to invite Jae Ha Lee, Senior in Research Area Engineer from GN1 Energy to the floor. Hello, I am Jae Ha Lee, Senior research engineer from GN1 Energy. I want to provide a short overview. This is the content. You can see it for yourself. Our company's name is GN1 Energy. It was established in 2002. And the CEO is Kun Hwa Choi. And we have 36 employees in total, and our capital is 3.110 million won, and our business area is geothermal, hydrothermal, and others. So this is a brief history of our company. GN1, our company, was established in January 2002 and under the name of the Kotec Energy. And in 2006, we were registered as a renewable energy company in 2006, and we received certification as a company research center. And in 2012, we built a geothermal system for smart farms. In 2013, September, we constructed the geothermal plant, and we changed our name to GN1. And in 2019, we submitted papers to be listed on Costock. And last year in March, we listed we were listed on Costock Exchange. Next, it is our company's organization chart. We have an operation headquarter one two. And the operation headquarter one is for geothermal, heat pump, and hydrothermal energy business. And the second operation headquarter was established last year. It was working on fuel cells and finding new business areas. And the R&D center mostly works on national projects, and also it works on developing new processes. As I explained, these are our business areas, utilizing geothermal energy for heating and cooling system. Also, we work on a uh, thermal system, heating and cooling systems. So these are some of the projects that our company carried out. The Lotte World Tower is located in Chamshir, Seoul. And for this project, we worked on the geothermal and aquathermal project. We utilize the Paltang Dam water, and 3,000 RT was utilized. And this is, uh, these are the projects that we worked on. 
there's a uh, Seoul City Hall, a Sejong Government Complex, and Kipco New Headquarter. There was one thing that I did not mention. The building that had been applied with Aqua Thermal was the system for Lotte Tower and the other buildings utilized geothermal energy. And there is a smart farm uh, that uses uh, Aqua Thermal with a uh, 110 RT. And the RT is a bit small for hydrothermal heat pump. This is because of the limit in the size. And it has to be maintained in the cold temperature. And the next is the Samsung Medical Center. For the medical center, we are considering providing the aqua thermal energy. We were trying to replace the cooling tower. Compared to when the center was built, their heating and cooling demand has gone up. There have, they have many outdated facilities. They have come to a situation where they have to buy ice to cool down the towers. And there is a water pipeline flow around this area. So we will bring water from the pipe to support its heating and cooling. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Next, I would like to invite uh, Eunhye Kwak, the senior manager from EGEN Engineering who will give a presentation online. Can you share the slide and begin your presentation? Can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Would you please uh, switch to the full slide, uh, the full screen? Go to window and yes, thank you. Good morning and good afternoon. As introduced, my name is Eunhye Kwak, the presenter, and my presentation will be divided into three parts, company overview, the concept of hydrothermal energy, and the performance of our company. EGEN Engineering is 10 years old this year, and its business areas are energy saving heating and cooling systems and renewable energy, and we are active in Korea, China, and the Middle East. Our heating and cooling system business is divided into three areas, hydrothermal energy and thermal energy storage system, and lastly, geothermal system. We are building and operating such systems. And the items that we are dealing with include air handling units, chillers, and heat pumps, and ex heat exchangers. And EGEN Engineering is capable of providing various uh, services. And this is the track record of our company. We have built the cooling and heating systems for large facilities such as Hanwha and Daejeon Expo. In Korea, you can get a lot of benefits if you use the heat storage systems. When you install the heat exchange systems, you can store heat during the night hours and then use that energy during the peak hours to address the electricity needs in the peak hours. By doing so, you can use smaller transformers for electricity peak, which is an additional advantage. And a case in point is the Rotte World Tower, which also had the heat exchange system, which I will uh, go over in detail on my last slide. 
The hydrothermal energy system uses the surface water or river water of seawater to provide cooling or heating. In Korea, uh, you are only allowed to use the uh, lines that are connected to the Paltang Dam. So in order to use the hydrothermal energy, you need to install relevant facilities nearby the Paltang Dam and you need to review whether you meet such conditions. And there are multiple uh, water management government agencies in Korea which calls for coordination with such uh, organizations. Here are an overview of the advantages of using the Paltang Dam water, which are favorable temperature conditions, abundant flow of water, and water quality suitability. During the summer, the water is about 20 to 25 degrees, while it is about 3 to 5 degrees during the winter. Given that the heating and cooling system is designed for about 20 degrees during the summer, the efficiency of the heat exchange system, heat storage system is quite high. And there is Han River flowing across the Korean Peninsula, especially Seoul. In Seoul, many companies are trying to use the hydrothermal energy. If you apply the hydrothermal energy, there are many advantages you can uh, you can use. First of all, you can remove the cooling tower. If you do not have to install a cooling tower, you can uh, tap into more uh, space. Since you don't need to install the cooling tower, you can use the space for other purposes. Second is the prevention of the release of pollutants. When you treat the cooling tower water, uh, you might be exposed to bacteria and other pollutants, but using the hydrothermal energy, you don't need to face those issues. This is a summary of the advantages provided by hydrothermal energy. And as I said earlier, the biggest advantage is energy saving benefits as well as carbon dioxide reduction. Next, geothermal system, hydrothermal plus water storage system and gas absorption cooler system are compared on this table. If you use the hydrothermal water storage system, the in initial investment cost might be high, but overall efficiency is quite high. Uh, for your information, the energy consumption for the plant 1 and the plant 2 are similar, but the operation costs are different. You might wonder why, but that's because, as I said earlier, when you use the heat storage system, you can get a lot of benefits from the government. One of them is a low cost of electricity during the night time. Uh, during the night time, the electricity is about 20% lower. That is why the operation costs for the plan 1 and the plan 2 are different. Next, this is an example of the application of hydrothermal energy in Korea. This is the Lotte World Tower, which was completed in 2015. Actually, this is Korea's first application of hydrothermal energy. And the thermal storage system installed in the tower is about 5,000 5, USRT, accounting for 25% of the total building. And this is the diagram of the uh, thermal energy storage system of the Lotte Tower, which is composed of heat exchanger, heat pump, and water storage tank. Since thermal, hydrothermal energy is used, the cooling and heating efficiencies are high. And you can store the energy during the night time and use it in the peak hours, uh, which allows for a stable supply of electricity. 
I'm sorry to interrupt, but you are running out of time. Can you please wrap it up soon? Okay, actually, uh, I already touched upon this content. Uh, I already talked about the uh, use of hydrothermal and heat storage system can save you a lot of money. And if you need further information, please contact me. Thank you. Next, next we'll be hearing about GNS Engineering, Ji Ki Sub Huang, team leader. Yes, Mr. Kim, please come to the podium. Can you come toward the microphone? Uh, we cannot hear you clearly, so please come toward the mic. We have 17 employees. We are a small, medium-sized company. At the beginning, we worked on the serving the groundwater. And the principal areas of our work is on the investigation and feasibility study of water resource field. And we also have done feasibility for groundwater artificial recharge. And we developed programs. And we are now working on geothermal and aquathermal energy systems. We participated in national research project. At the beginning, we took part in the open system. And then we participated in the TS system. We carried this project out with the Agriculture Research Institute. And so we applied the TS system for the first time in Korea. And we are working with the Energy Research Institute right now on TS system and the aqua thermal system. And then we are trying to, we are carrying out a study on integrated systems. What you see here is our a system being applied. So the temperature soar may be shown here. So there is a heat exchanger and the temperature that is stored at seven degrees. And we checked and maintained it for three months. And during the heating, the heat source water, we checked whether they were maintained at 20 degrees. And for the ground water that was stored, we checked the efficiency that can be obtained. What you are seeing now is how we are making the installation on the site. And then we have about a 75 VRT. And there is a heat water storage system. And there are six bores that can uh, store the waste water. And by doing so, we were able to utilize 90% of the groundwater. And in Korea, the aquifer is 20 meters below. And in Busan, the ATES center area as well as other areas, uh, the differences exist, but mostly aqua four are 20 to 30 meters below the ground level. Gumgang area, the aqua four for this area is about 20 meters below the ground. In some cases, we can have the system three to uh, three meters below the surface. And then this is the system that we established recently, which is 
100 RT and this is an ongoing project and an ATES system and the thickness if you see the thickness uh, this is quite shallow for aquifer So it's not that good to get the groundwater. So we are also using the groundwater for this project and it's about 12 meters and there is a hole about 100 meters that has been drilled. So we were able to get a lot of uh, source water from this ground to water. And other than Dakdong and Han River, there aren't many rivers or water resources that are 10 meters below. So we are working on the agriculture system. So we are trying to Huge ATES near the river. And we have a lot of uh, greenhouses. So compared to buildings, we are utilizing aquathermal energy for these greenhouses. And in Korea, about 100 RT installation is the biggest installation that we have done in Korea. And our goal is to have the system of 200 RTE and we wanted to check the efficiency that can be achieved. And we are targeting 200 hectare systems at the moment, but we have the 100 hectare systems at the moment, which are mostly for greenhouses. And so for river water sources and other systems, they can be used and they don't have to be vertical system. They can be horizontal ones. So we have to do study on this. And for this installation, what we are most concerned about is uh, the operating time of the heating and cooling time. Uh, because of the time difference between heating and cooling, the TS system's efficiency can be reduced. So we want to use this uh, system mostly during the summer. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Our next speaker is uh, Kyung Ho Ryu, Executive Director from Chang Han Engineers. Good morning and good after afternoon, everyone. And thank you for your introduction. Let me begin. Our company is 35 years old. We are quite an established company. And as you, you might know, we have co-worked with many global companies. So we are quite open to overseas cooperation. We really like penguins. First, penguins are the penguins that are brave enough to jump into the water first. We are actually quite first penguins because we uh, are the first to develop the, the pumps, uh, booster pumps in Korea. Also, there are many things that we manufactured first in Korea, for example, the extension tanks and CBX were also introduced by us for the first time in Korea. There are a few items I'd like to go through today. First, this storage system. This system is used to store the cooled uh, heat during the night time to be used for air conditioning during the daytime. As you know, the nighttime electricity is more affordable. 
that each YD system is quite uh, efficient. And this system is not made of metal, but made of polymer. So, it, and it's very thin. And the ice product production can be quite uh, efficient thanks to its materials. And we have installed this system in over 300 sites in Korea. And by using this technology, we can save a lot of energy. And the next item I want to introduce is PVT system, which can uh, produce electricity and hot water at the same time. I actually prepared a video for the sake of time. Uh, can I get audio for the video? Uh, is the video shown on Zoom? PVT is the combination of the photovoltaic and thermal, which uses the same solar panel to produce electricity as well as hot water. This is a new technology. Usually, solar panels only use 17% of the solar energy, and the rest of it is wasted in the form of heat. However, PVT can recover such wasted heat thereby uh, making full use of solar energy. PVT is actually a solar panel equipped with a thermal panel. This is quite light, and it's resistant to uh, erosion, which uh, gives this product a longer lifespan. Uh, the uh, Golf Center's clubhouse has installed the PVC to provide hot water and electricity. As well as the operation of the electricity cart, there are many uh, show showers that uh, people take in the Golf clubhouse, which calls for a lot of hot water. And that is why the PVT is a perfect fit, fit for the uh, clubhouse especially during the summer since the PVT can reduce the heat itself, uh, the electricity production can be up by over 10%. Uh, since the video is not being shown via the Zoom function, can you please uh, briefly uh, explain the technology and stop the video? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. So let me briefly talk about my technology. The PVT can produce three times more energy. So this is uh, the product that we are developing, and I think that's all for this item. And there are many sites that we have carried out our project. And what's interesting here is that usually when it uh, snows, the solar panels uh, do not work quite well. However, as you can see from the slide, the snow on the solar panel uh, melts when you use the PVT. This is quite interesting. And the last thing I want to introduce is that uh, we are developing pumps or heat exchangers and tanks using our core technologies. And the heat exchangers as well as the filters uh, can be provided in a package. So I want to uh, highlight the fact that we have developed so many uh, core technologies. 
Uh, this shows the Seoul's 10 highest buildings. And this shows that our technologies are all in those buildings. But the second highest, which is Hyundai Motors new headquarters, uh, this is not uh, built yet. So we are not sure whether our technology will be included in there or not. And because of the COVID-19, we can not have uh, in-person exchanges as we did before, but uh, we have been quite active worldwide. And I would like to thank the host for organizing this event before I end my presentation. Thank you for uh, listening. Thank you very much. Uh, now, our last speaker is Yeon Ju Rim, president of Intertech, who has come a long way from the Jeju Island. Hello, everyone. As introduced, my name is Yeon Ju Rim from Intertech. Our company is utilizing hydrothermal energy. And we are conducting a study on the energy and growth of environment of greenhouse. Uh, you can continue on. Your slide is being shown on the Zoom. We are operating in Jeju, the southernmost part of Korea, and we are working on uh, aquathermal energy system. We are utilizing the abundant sea water from Jeju and other water resources on the Jeju Island. The specific heat capacity of water is one, and using the hydro energy, uh, we can save energy by 73% and we can also reduce the cost and we can also uh, reduce the CO2 emissions by 38%. And the energy utilization rate for the building's heating and cooling was 25%. But when we convert uh, the fossil fuels to the hydrothermal energy, we can reduce the energy consumption by 50%. And we are striving to uh, build this market as well. And we are seeking the win-win growth through the technology development. And this is the YouTube video that I want to show you for the explanation of our technology. But because of the time constraint, I cannot play this uh, video at the moment. But this video shows how we are using the underground water and other uh, water resources for the cooling and heating system. So please refer to this video. Now let me introduce our technology and talk about how we are using the aqua thermal energy. Uh, as you can see, the hydrothermal energy is being used a lot and the power plant thermal effluent is used a lot. And using this solution, we can reduce the fuel costs and the relevant uh, CO2 emissions as well. Uh, we use the wasted uh, thermal energy to generate energy. And as you can see, uh, this uh, KOMIPO is using this energy. And this picture shows that we signed an agreement to utilize the thermal affluent in cultivating a lot of crops such as blueberries and tangerines. In other words, such heat sources are used for the cultivation of these crops. Let me also uh, skip the introduction of the technologies for the sake of time. This picture shows that the Korea Midland Power is utilizing the uh, thermal effluent from the demonstration site as highlighted in the picture. And about 120 RT heat pumps is used uh, to supply electricity. And such energy is being supplied to the uh, relevant area. 
uh, what I am showing you are the various slides related to the technology that I explained. And this slide shows the summary of the economic evaluation in terms of environment. So since 2018, 18, uh, we were able to uh, produce more renewable energy using our uh, technology. The specific numbers are on the slide. We were able to produce 75.7 .7 TOE renewable energy and save a 22 a TOE energy, we were also able to reduce the GHG emissions by 114 uh, tons. So we are utilizing renewable energy and seawater energy and other heat uh, energy sources to make Korea and the Jeju Island a uh, greener places. Thank you. Now, let me begin the Q&A session, which will last until 5 p.m. Please take advantage of this precious opportunity to ask questions. The Korean speaker? If you have question, please uh, unmute yourself and uh, say, uh, speak your question to uh, direct to uh, any Korean speaker here. I can start first. Uh, 먼저 제가 하나 질문을 드리고 싶은데요. Let me ask a question first. GNS. Um, as far as I know, this is the only company in Korea in terms of the ATES installation. I wonder what was the biggest uh, difficulty that you faced in installing the ATES in Korea. In Korea, the landscape, the aquifer are thin. So the area that we can use are not wide and that is why we need to develop technology to put the water in and uh, it's possible to do the pumping but actually inputting the water in it's not that easy so we are trying to find ways to inject as much water as we can and in Puyo area we have an injection of 80 percent and in Wonju area we have a bore, a, and even when that bore is used, it's less than 70%, according to our estimation. So after you extract, you inject back in, and when you inject the water back in, it's 70 to 80%, and uh, that is what you estimated, right? The speaker who want to ask still? If not, are there any Korean participants who have questions to the Dutch side? Yes, from Changhan Engineers. Yes, my name is Liu Gang Ho. I have a question to Emoran. So, we have experience of a Venno greenhouse in Korea and the heat source is an electric boiler and that is because the electricity performing is very cheap and subsidized by the government in Korea. That is why we use the electric boiler. How about in the Netherlands? What is the main heat source used in the greenhouses in the Netherlands? That's my question. Okay, uh, this question is to Ronald. Uh, Ronald Tyson from Amaron. Did you hear the uh, translation for the question? He was asking what is the main source of energy which is used for the uh, greenhouses in the Netherlands? Because in Korea, the green uh, electricity uh, for agriculture is cheap, so so the uh, the uh, electric boilers are uh, commonly used. Ronald, or can you answer that? Or even Manuel, I think you can also do that uh, from Priva as well. Yeah. Uh, actually, 
I'm based in uh, Southeast Asia. I have little knowledge of what's happening up uh, on that part in the Netherlands, to be to be fair. I think uh, somebody maybe from uh, Wittefain or um, uh, storing uh, connecting greenhouses could be, uh, could be more uh, suitable. Okay. Uh, is there anybody? Okay, boss, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah we are working a lot with uh, in the agriculture sector, and I think that the CHP is a very common technology, uh, which is now fading a little bit out because we want to get rid of the gas. Uh, so we see that a lot of ATIS systems are used, but also more and more deep uh, geothermal wells. So where we abstract uh, 70 degrees from uh, uh, aquifers from about two two and a half kilometer. So there is a change at the moment, but I think electricity is not the main source in the Netherlands. Uh, so mainly it was gas, but that's now fading out, and we are now looking for alternatives. The yeah. 열병합 발전이 주로 이제 활용이 되고 사실은 큰 이유는 이제 그 연소가 가스가 내전돼서 생산이 가스 전이 내전돼서. Ah, there is a gas field in the Netherlands. So that is why it's easy to supply natural gas and the pipelines for natural gas are existing uh, throughout the nation. And uh, the CO2 can be used to produce electricity in the farms. And in the Netherlands, of course, they are going toward carbon neutrality and that is why they want to reduce the use of natural gas and that is why the other alternatives would be the aquathermal and the geothermal energy. So we have a question from Asian Engineering. Uh, this question is posed to the EBS Power. Alexander. In Korea, for um, uh, regularly, in this, especially in summer season, do you also consider this a uh, uh, high wind a situation for your uh, rooftop uh, structures? Do you have a sort of a track record or uh, uh, analysis uh, based on this uh, sort of storm uh, weather, stormy weather? Especially, I think, Busan, uh, you mentioned, uh, that's uh, quite a city where a typhoon uh, always hit uh, almost every year. Uh, yes, yes. Um, the design of uh, Power Nest is um, storm safe. Um, it's designed to withstand typhoons and hurricanes. And very important, the turbine that is in the structure is certified for the Korean market uh, to be typhoon safe and can be can be uh, implemented. 네, 타이프, 어, 태풍에 대한 그. So the analysis about the impact of typhoon is done. Netherlands uh, does not face a typhoon that commonly. However, in the winter time, there are heavy winds. So I'm sure they took wind and typhoons into consideration when developing the technology. Any further questions? Yes. Uh, the question from GN1. I want to ask a question to Ibis, Ibis Power. You said that you use solar energy and wind energy to produce electricity. And generally speaking, the production and consumption of energy does not coincide. So how do you overcome that time difference? Yes, the, the wind and solar energy are very complementary resources so when it's uh, sunny it's not not so much windy and when it's winter it's very windy and it's not so sunny so it's very complementary however there are times that both resources are not high enough in the netherlands we can use the grid so we stay connected to the grid as a um, like a battery system uh, but you can also go off grid, and in that case, you implement the battery into the building, um, and then you have a full resource all year round. Has that answered your question? 
so the wind power and the solar power they are different in terms of generation timing and thus they can kind of complement each other and we have one additional question and uh, I think this is going to be the last question and if there are any additional questions uh, we can answer them online so please uh, send me the questions via the email if you have further questions you can answer from the if technology there uh, the ENG is an engineering is asking how you uh, do the water treatment for uh, uh, water from the aquifer when you do when you install the ATS ATES system that's a very good question. Uh, normally, we first investigate what is the water quality of the aquifer, and we try to select uh, aquifers which are suitable for the ATIS uh, application. So in normal cases, we don't treat the uh, abstracted and injected water. So we have a, a tight, a closed system where we abstract and we inject 100% of the abstracted amount. But there is no water treatment because that uh, takes too much uh, effort and it is not necessary if you keep your complete system airtight. Okay, I think that's a good, good answer. So, because it is a closed system and 100% of what is extracted is injected back in, so there is no t need for treatment of the water. I think that makes a difference between uh, the Netherlands and Korea's experiences. In the Netherlands, the, uh, it's easy to re-inject the water into the aquifer, and that makes a difference between the two countries. I think that brings us to the end of today's uh, event. Uh, I would like to thank the SAREC and Vice President Choi Jun Young for making today's uh, event possible in celebration of the 60th anniversary of the diplomatic ties between the Netherlands and Korea and the 50th anniversary of the SAREC. I'm looking forward to working with you in the future, and thank you all for coming. This is the end of the uh, event today, but if you have any questions or you want to connect it to Korean uh, network, please send us email. Uh, we'll respond uh, regarding to that. Thank you very much for joining. See you. Bye.